What does it mean when several of the earliest Quran manuscripts are corrected in the very same spot? Well, welcome back to Variant Quran. This is a special day and a day that some of you have been waiting for. I am going to be showing to you a spot in multiple early Quran manuscripts at which there has been a correction. Now, what we're looking at today is one of the things that I set out to hopefully find when I began the process of casting my net wide and surveying many, many manuscripts for the corrections, and that is the possible emergence of some patterns and repetition in multiple manuscripts of the similar corrections or corrections of a similar passage or spot in the Quranic text. And so, as you can imagine, these things emerge over time, and in the early time of my doctoral dissertation, I had come, I had noticed that there were at least four different manuscripts that had corrections at this particular spot in this at this particular verse. And since then, I've actually come across a couple of a uh, couple others that have corrections there as well. So um, I don't want to belabor this. We'll jump right in and take a look at these manuscripts. BNF Arab 328. This is a manuscript written in the Hijazi style. That is one of the earliest script styles that we find Qurans written in. And uh, this manuscript lives at the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris. I have reviewed it personally uh, at, on two occasions at least and have noted the correction at this particular spot. Now this is verse 9109, Tauba 109. And the verse reads, and I'm reading here from the Majid Fakhri translation, um, is one who founds his edifice upon the fear and good pleasure of Allah better, or one who founds his edifice upon the brink of a crumbling precipice that will tumble down with him into the fire of hell. Allah does not guide the unjust people. And uh, so in the Arabic of this verse, the portion that is overwritten in this particular manuscript is waridwanin Um So the first thing we're going to do is just look at what has been done in these various manuscripts. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you what I think um, has happened at this particular spot. So what you see here is the words uh, waridwanin and good pleasure, better or. So the way the uh, the way that uh, Majid Fakhri translates this has the uh, a little bit of a different word order than the way it appears in the Arabic. The way it appears in the Arabic is literally uh, is the one who builds his edifice upon the fear from Allah and good pleasure, meaning his good pleasure, better, or the one who builds his edifice upon the brink of a crumbling precipice. Okay, so that's that's the um, word order that, as it appears in the Arabic. And what has happened here is the uh, words wa ridwanin, hairun am, has been written over an erasure. Now, some of those words, part, part of that may have existed before, um, but was possibly erased. And in order to make way for the new, what was then written afterward. Now we're going to talk about the possible reasons for this, and there are various reasons, commonly known scribal uh, errors or causes of scribal error, and uh, we will consider those as I always try to do initially when I'm looking at any correction, and we're going to consider those possible reasons to rule them out and make sure that they aren't the cause of these multiple corrections in these several Quran manuscripts. Okay, so that is BNF Arab 328. This is a probably late, mid to late seventh century manuscript, not long after the time of uh, Muhammad. And uh, here is the second one, BNF Arab 330. This also is written in a form of a Hijazi script. And as you can see in this manuscript, although you can tell it's a different scribe, it's clearly a different um, handwriting style. And this is one of the interesting things about the Hijazi scripts. And at some point I will do a video on the uh, different script styles to give you an introduction to, um, I should do that soon, to give you an introduction to the what the script styles generally look like, and you can see how the evolution of the script styles progressed over time. But both of these so far that we've looked at are forms of the Hijazi script style, and as I started to mention, the Hijazi script style displays most evidently the individual personality and writing style of the scribes. So you can see this is clearly a different person, just as different people have different handwritings. Um, the script itself wasn't quite so formalized at this stage in the process, so different people 
is clearly recognizable when you have a change of scribe. All right, so what you see happening here is the, um, I believe at the end of the first line of text is the erasure of something that has been overwritten, and uh, it is the uh, wow of the word taqwa, or fear. Then you see on the next line, you do see some shadows of what was first written, which would be uh, out into the margin. Uh, there are a couple things going on here. I'll talk about those as we progress. But the overwritten text is the final uh, Aleph Maksura of Taqwa, and the word Min Allah Wa Ridwan, and I believe part of the word uh, Chayrun, better than. Okay, so this has been written over an erasure. It does look like the work of the original scribe to me. Uh, this, the writing style is similar. Uh, maybe it's not quite as as confident, but I'm not willing to say that it was not the original scribe. I think this does look like it is the work of the original scribe, and probably near the time of first production of this manuscript, although we can't be for sure on that. But the um, but the ink color and uh, nib width and all the other factors point toward something that happened closer to the time of original production. So if we look underneath here, what we can see is that there is a shadow. Actually, those that first Aleph Maksura and the word Min seems to be kind of faded. And so if you were looking at it initially, as does the wow that ends the final line, it looks a little bit faded as well. So we'd want to think about what is going on there. But underneath the word Allah here, there is a shadow of the final, final uh, Aleph Maksura of Taqwa. So you can actually see quite clearly what has happened here. The final Aleph Maksura of the word Taqwa was first written right at the beginning of this line underneath the word where the word Allah is written at, at this moment. And you can see that the word Allah was initially written after that. Uh, underneath where the word Ridwan is written. So clearly this text was first written without the word Ridwan and was read is one who founds his edifice upon the fear of Allah better or one who founds his edifice upon the brink of a crumbling precipice. And uh, there's no question in my mind that that's what was first written in this manuscript. All right, so the word Ridwan was, uh, was left out. And then it was later erased and extended out into the margin to make room for that word. All right, let's take a look at our third example here. This is from E20, and this is in the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts in St. Petersburg, Russia. This uh, verse um, has, interestingly, a correction at the very same spot. It is a little bit bunched. I am not sure that this is the original <clears throat> scribe who made this correction. And you can see that the text is angled to the right, The particularly the upward extenders of the text is angled to the right. There are a couple things that have happened here, but it does look like it's a different ink and uh, possibly a different nib and I think a different scribe who wrote this corrected portion. And also you can see it's a little bit bunched in, although not terribly so. So once again, we have the words covering the word Ridwan uh, is written over an erasure here and, um, and the word uh, Min Allah. Okay. And we cannot see the word Taqwa in this case. Um, because the uh, part part of that page has been lost. But we, I assume that the word taqwa existed there first. All right. So this cor uh, correction has made, been made over an erasure. And after the fact, you can see one other thing, but it's not the focus of my attention here, is that the insertion of a red olive here that exists as a dagger olive in the Quranic text today. It's a little olive that's written above the text, above the line, in order to show that this is to be pronounced as a long olive, even though the long olive is not explicitly written in the word. And so at some point in the development of the way that Quran manuscripts were written, olives were inserted, and sometimes they're written in red like this, and so that would be corresponding to what we would see as a dagger olive today. That is not the focus here. I just wanted to show you that there is a correction over this spot, including the word uh, Ridwan. Good pleasure. Here's the third one. This is Marcel 9. It is at the National Library of Russia. Also an early manuscript. This probably is, well, probably early 8th century manuscript. It is a horizontal format manuscript versus the Hijazi manuscripts, which are almost always in a vertical format. And so the page dimensions changed over time. The style for producing pages changed. And so the initial pages were a vertical format, much like the format of 
how most books are produced today with uh, the page being taller than it is wide. And then at some point in time, uh, maybe the early 8th century, they went to a horizontal, predominantly in a horizontal format, meaning they're wider than they are tall. And that is the case with this one, even though I don't show you the entire manuscript page here. All right, so once again, we see the word Ridwan being a uh, part of this erasure overwritten. And so the word Allah in this case is not, but the word Ridwan, Hairun Am, uh, and in this case, Man is also part of it, as you can tell by the upward extending letter, which is erased under the uh, under the meme of that. And also there's an Aleph, uh, the initial Aleph of Asasa is written after the fact in this case too. So in each of these instances, the exact portion has not been erased, but I think the same thing has probably been happening. And that is the insertion of the word Ridwan, where it was initially omitted. You can see that the text is also a little bit bunched here as well. And so I think that's, I think that's probably what happened here. All right, so those are four examples of correction at the same spot in the same verse, Surah 9, 109. All right, so here is uh, just a simple side-by-side -side of the four manuscripts that we just looked at to help you visualize a little bit more clearly how they line up with one another, what corresponds between the four. And as you can see, the um, exact area of correction is not identical, but they do have uh, overlap. So the red boxes are drawn around the corrected portions. The second one down, of course, has uh, one letter corrected on the, uh, possibly corrected on the previous line. The third one down may have a correction that uh, extends off to the, on the right side, but that part of the page has been lost. But uh, what is corrected on the existing manuscripts on these lines is shown by the red square. And here you can see the common portion between all four of the manuscripts, and it is the letters, uh, the word Waridwan, uh, higher in each case. Now, the other question to ask is, what would be the cause, or is this merely a scribal error in all four of these cases? And there are some known causes of scribal error in early manuscripts, and so we're going to take a look at those at this moment. One of the most common reasons for a mistake is called ditography or haplography. Ditography is the writing of something twice, and haplography is the omission of something and, uh, and a moving on to the next, um, to a later portion in the text when copying a text and just continuing from there. So it causes an omission of something that was ought to have been there. And both ditography and haplography are caused by something called parablepsis. Now, parablepsis is not a um, is not a scribal error in itself. It is a something that happens. And parablepsis means a skip of the eye. So the eye skips over uh, to another portion in the text when somebody is copying. You're, you're copying, you're writing down, and then you look away to uh, fill the ink or some other thing, and then you look back at the text that you're copying from and your eye falls upon the place in the text where you think you are supposed to be moving on from. Now, what would cause your eye to fall upon a place in the text that is different from the one that you're moving on from that you are actually at? And the answer to that is something that is the same as what you just wrote. And so the common cause for paraplepsis is the existence in the text that you're copying from of two instances of the same word or sequence of words in close proximity to each other. So let's say the word was min Allah, from Allah in this case. If that sequence of words, if Allah or min Allah occurred somewhere else in close proximity, maybe I wrote the word min Allah, I went to refill my ink, I looked back and I saw the instance of min Allah, but it wasn't the right one. It was maybe the one earlier or the one later. And I continued writing. That would be uh, a cause of me writing the wrong thing after that, if there was something different after those two instances of middle law. So that having been said, the first question then to ask on this page is, did the word Allah occur elsewhere on this page or min Allah or taqwa min Allah in close proximity? And there is another instance of Allah later in this same verse, but it's uh, preceded by wow. And. and so because of this, I don't think it's likely that a scribe would have confused this instance of a law with that instance of a law. And furthermore, that second instance of a law is not followed by the word Ridwan. So that's a further reason to uh, be quite certain that this is not an instance of parablepsis causing some either ditography or haplography. Okay, how about the words min Allah? Well, the word min Allah uh, does not exist anywhere else in close proximity. The next instance is, well, it is two verses later in 
9111. And so if we look over at that, the word uh, min Allah is likewise not followed by the word um, by the word Ridwan. So, or wa Ridwan, wa, wa Ridwan. So once again, we don't have anything that could account for what is happening here. And then finally, how about the words taqwa min Allah, fear of Allah? Does that occur anywhere else in proximity? And no, it does not exist anywhere else in proximity. In fact, it does not exist anywhere else in the Quran at all. And so I think we've completely ruled out the possibility of detography or haplography due to parablepsis in this case. Now, one other thing that I would look at ordinarily if I wanted to be very thorough and look and rule out the possibility, particularly if there was a correction in a spot that looked like there was something that kind of formulaic, and there are many, the Quran is very, very repetitive, has many sort of stock phrases that get repeated uh, again and again, is I would um, consider whether there is the possibility that the scribe had in mind came upon one of those common phrases in the Quran and wrote it the way that it is elsewhere commonly written in the Quran, even though at the particular spot at in question, it was not supposed to be written that way. And um, so in order to do that, there are different ways that you would look at that. But the way that, that I ordinarily would look at something like that is to look at a concordance. And I would look up one of the words in it. Uh, in this case, maybe the word Hyrun. Uh, look it up and look at all the ins through all the instances that exist in the Quran to see where and how many places that um, word exists in a, uh, in a in a particular common phrase, and uh, that could help me rule out whether it is likely or possibly a cause in a particular instance of correction. In this case, I don't think that applies because I don't see this phrase as being something that is formulaic, especially because, as I mentioned, the word uh, taqwa min Allah does not occur elsewhere in the Quran. So that is it. But I just wanted to mention it uh, to. Uh, part of what I'm doing here is teaching, uh, teaching you, sort of enabling you to understand the craft that I've learned all these uh, over this time and how to um, analyze and look at a text. Okay, so we've reviewed the four manuscripts that have the overlapping corrections at this particular verse. As I have mentioned previously, there are a total of, well, six manuscripts that I've uh, come across so far that have corrections at this verse 9109. The other ones, however, don't have corrections that overlap the four that I just showed you. In this case, I'm just going to show you one additional one. This is the manuscript in Berlin, and it does have correction of the two instances of Bunyana, who, and it looks like it was probably the insertion of the long olive in the middle there. And there is additionally, just after the word Shafa, an erasure of some letter and leaving a gap. So you can see that I've placed boxes around those three. If you look up, however, at the spot that we have just found corrected in the other manuscripts, that appears to have been written uh, originally in this manuscript. It's a little bit hard to tell in this manuscript because it has been re-inked, and that's what you see with the darker lines over the top there. But it is still possible to see what the parts of it were original for the most part. And it doesn't look like there was anything unusual going on up there. Uh, the only other thing I will mention today is that uh, obviously you're trying to look at other manuscripts to compare that have this verse represented in them. And I haven't reviewed all of them uh, for this video, but I have looked at the Tupkapa in my opinion and that of the others who have edited it a later manuscript. So that is that. Um, thanks so much for watching this video today, and I hope it's interesting. There's much more, obviously, that could be said, but that is enough for now. We'll talk to you again soon, and thanks for liking and subscribing, leaving comments, and we will continue the discussion. Thank you.